Good after- afternoon, everybody. This is Andy Pace back this week with another episode of Non-Toxic Environments Live. Uh, I promoted this one uh, this week a little bit heavier than I normally do because I think it's a really, really timely topic. This time of year, we start thinking about, you know, s- spring coming into summer and we're sort of opening up our homes and uh, seeing what we got to do for spring cleaning around the house. And for most people in most situations, that's not necessarily that big of a deal. But when you get in a situation like what Ash and Sam have lived through for the last almost 10 years, um, you know, just cleaning out the house for a spring cleaning is, is um, not even close to what they had to go through. And so I've had the pleasure uh, of working with them for the last almost year now, actually, in, in part of their journey. Uh, you know, obviously, the, the biggest part of their journey happened before I ever met them. And, and um, they were able to connect with me and then with others to start the rebuilding process. And, and I'm really happy to be a part of that and um, hope that it's, it's uh, working and, and for the benefit of the entire family. But the real struggle was in those years before we ever met and, and what they went through before they were able to, um, decide on the best way to move forward. So uh, I'm going to bring Ash and Sam on the show and, and talk about um, their history and uh, what happened with the home down there in South Carolina. And then um, let's talk about some more uplifting things and at, at, in, and talk about how uh, they've, they do have some victories on this and, and, and helping us all out in our all of our journeys. So uh, Ash, Sam, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. for having us on. Uh, you are more than welcome. I, and I, and I truly mean it. I, I, I've had the the honor of working with you both, and I say that because I, I've I've met a lot of people in my career. I, I've I've worked with over thirty thousand people in my career, and with all types of health issues or no health issues at all, they just want to live in a healthier home. And when I heard the story of your project, um, I mean, as as you know, I mean, I think within a matter of days. I reached out and Jay at AFM reached out and then our marketing person reached out. We all just, we all just knew that this is a story that needed to be told and not because of, of um, saying, you know, look how horrible these people have it, but no, look at what all of us can potentially have to go through at one point or another. And this is how you get through it. So it really is, in my opinion, it's going to be turning out to be a, um, a happy story, but with a lot of sadness before that. And, and I, I just hope that your story helps others through that process, knowing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So, um, so it started back in 2014. Is that correct? I mean, that's when we bought the house. Okay. So that when we bought the house, we moved from Florida and we moved one because of the housing market, like in Florida, you could get very little (laughs) for a lot and we had just adopted two children within seven months so we all of a sudden had five kids and two of them were like living in our bedroom we just thought like we needed a bigger space to live in and we wanted more nature and just like a more wholesome holistic upbringing for our kids we moved to south carolina and um uh, we saw this house and it it was like, this is our dream house in our dream neighborhood. Like the kids have kids upon kids, their age to play with, like sweet, kind kids. And so I like, I think we got, we looked at the house. We thought there's no way that this can happen. And then we got a call from a real estate agent and she's like, okay, there's four other families putting a offer in today. If you want this house, you have to do it today. And we were like, ah, like we don't even know. And so we prayed about it and we like, just, I wrote an email to the owner and was like, this is what, where I see my family and da 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 da. We ended up getting, you know, the, the bid or whatever. And I'm telling you, like our house was just like dreamy, beautiful. Mm -hmm. We thought we, I, I mean, we just felt like, wow, like this is, this is kind of, this is it. There was, let me just say, zero signs of mold or anything wrong like you would never ever ever imagine they're being like it was not a fixer upper um as far as we could see it's 
let's just say we bought the money pit, but it looked really beautiful mm. right. for a decade. Mm. And so what was the first um, sign that something, something was going on? I mean, our son, so we have five kids and our fourth child, um, our oldest adopted, our oldest adopted child. He, um, just like changed one really one day i can like pinpoint a day um but he had been he had been struggling with some stuff before he had been... we just thought it was um like being three or four years old mm-hmm. we're, and here he is we're doing yeah. we're doing a video okay no, later Upstairs. okay so sorry That's um, right. yeah so Things changed, just started having a lot of health issues, mm-hmm. a lot of bowel issues. <laughs> He's serious. He is. Mm-hmm. A lot of bowel Do issues. Make a lot of, appearance a lot of beautiful face in behavioral there? issues. <laughs> um, a <laughs> lot of um, rage. Mm-hmm. A lot of OCD. A lot of anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, it was yeah, just nervous. very, 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 very extreme. Mm-hmm. Life. Yeah, very, okay. very traumatic, like a lot of trauma for a lot of years, a lot of gaslighting from schools, a lot okay. of gaslighting from friends in the community, a lot of you're a bad parent, basically, wow. that some, something must be, it must be something you're doing at home. Okay. I mean, we live in, we live in the South, so very few people actually said that, but it was all like Implied. Well, the, school, the, the, schools, the schools were kind of like, I don't understand. They don't talk like that. Right. <laughs> <was> right. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't understand, like, you know, this, he's doing so well on his tests. So this must be a problem. Maybe something you're doing at home with parenting, even though he would be having panic attacks in class. Right. You know, and they would like send him home early. Um, and so, then our other kids would be at the same school doing fine. It's like, okay, they're in the same house. Like, they're getting raised the same. Like, right. Yeah, right. This is, uh, yeah. But it was also, like, he, he would vomit, like, um, like yellow, like, oh. vomit sometimes. And sometimes he would just, like, compulsively eat. Like, just, you just have, we feed him those pouches, like, just tons When he was, a, like, little. Things. Yeah, but I think there was some of that stuff that was maybe yeah. not right then. Anyway, it kind of, know. like, progr- it went, it kind of just progressively got, Worse and worse. It was okay. some like couldn't poop like yep. at all, no matter what you did. Right. Um, but then it got it, then it got very like mental illness. And there was psych. A, a lot of rage. Yeah, like oh. a lot of like throw. Yeah, like a really bad. <laughs> really well, and, and then and then a number of the other children also developed. I mean, even <laughs> even the family pets developed problems. That was towards like the end, and that's okay. when we kind of were like. Yeah, so towards the end, and we kind of thought, I mean, things kind of progressively kept getting worse, but we kind of thought it was like COVID, just the effects of like that stress. Sam was an ICU nurse at the time. Um, and all the kids were basically at home most of that time. Sure. Um, and then just get, like kind of destroying the house. We had two dogs. We had a cat. Um, and the, the cat like... We a lot of mess. Couldn't mess. like walk, like jump or walk, like it would fall off balance. And we just thought we got a really weird cat. Like it doesn't do that now. Let me right. just like jump to the punchline. Our dog had like a rash, like on her belly. Um, but our dog, like our our two oldest daughters, um, a year ago. So this is like right when we moved out of the mold. Like just figured out, she was failing all of her classes. Like wow, she was failing them all and. And then another, the other one was like having panic attacks, like all the time, like just couldn't handle like sensory overload things. And another one of our sons was having like a lot of anxiety. And again, we're like, you know, like, I don't know. This is right. just, I guess, part of parenting and our kids are having a hard time in different ways. But like, again, jumping forward, you know, the one that was failing like every class she is like recommended all for honors, straight A's. Teachers love her. They're like, you're so, your daughter's so brilliant. Like, I mean, it's just, it's like, what, you know, world am I? It's just like a total 180 right. that my right. children have experienced just from moving out of mold and having time right. to 
breathe like fresh air detox and we had mm-hmm. we had no idea right um, but, so yeah the, you know the obviously of what's going on with your children and pets and so everybody in the home is just you know having issues um, so many people move into homes and they go through all the inspections, as you said, it passed all the inspections. Yeah. People looked through it and said it looked fine. I mean, I've, yeah. I've spent hours on zoom calls with clients all over the country while they're going through Zillow listings with me to see if I can point yeah. out anything. Right, right. Right. But you, you, you can't see these things yeah. in pictures or even in person sometimes. So how did you figure it out? That was, that um, you probably didn't even think mold was an issue. You didn't know what it was, but what was the trigger that, that said, Oh, this is a mold problem. I mean, we knew. So the disease that our son has is PANS pediatric okay. acute onset neuropsychiatric syndrome. Mm-hmm. And it's, we know it's caused by a biotoxin illness. A lot of times strep, the strep virus, but also mm-hmm. sometimes like, uh, mycoplasma pneumonia or Lyme disease, mm-hmm. sometimes extreme allergies, but mold is like a really over like reoccurring overriding one for a lot of people. But we, I mean, so we, in 2020, we had a mold inspector come out and they did an air test and we just, we wanted to just rule it out. Like, even though we couldn't see anything and he actually was tested. Um, I think the test that you were saying that you did, yeah. um, and it, his mold levels, like the oxy, what's myotoxin. it? Yeah, that was for myotoxins. The oxy, I don't remember how you say it. Ochratoxin. Anyway, yes, yes, ochratoxin. Yes, it was like very minorly elevated. I mean, okay. so it, it was just like, well, we ruled that out. Moving right. on. So the reason that how, why we came back to it is we discovered a little leak, a small leak under our fridge, like a con it was like a manufacturer defect. And we, it, we noticed it was like making some of the wood soft. So we had a um, repairman come and move it and it had eaten away like through the floor. So there was a little floor or hole going to our crawl space. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Something happened when that happened. I think it created like this negative pressure thing to where there wasn't maybe there wasn't the fan or whatever was going on, like with the refrigerator. And it, I started smelling mold. I was like, Sam, I smell mold. I smell mold. And it, I realized it was like at our vents, all the places in the house or in the bottom floor where there were vents. And so I don't know. It's like my intuition. It's like everything just like came together. And I'm like, I know this is what it is. I know this is what it is. Like we have to get our son out. We, we just have, we have to get out and we've got to figure out how to get this like really tested, like really, really look into it. So that there actually wasn't mold under the refrigerator, but there was severe mold in the crawl space that had molded all of our subfloor from like our floors from the bottom up. So we couldn't see it. Right. And then we also found out because our house was it was more like the vents built in the seventies that the vents weren't sealed. Right. And so it was just like coming up. We also found like there was like an old register that led to nowhere that had cracks. So that was like cracks in this house. So, and this is stuff that again, like that vent thing, Sam I had, figured that out. I had out. no idea. Yeah, that was even after they'd been inspected twice. Nobody said anything. Um, but you know, I think that I think the biggest takeaway for people is if you have a crawl space that a large portion of the amount of air that's in your house is coming from that crawl space. Mm-hmm. Even if you have everything pretty or well an sealed, attic, attic if it's got yeah. an issue. Yeah, yeah it, it, it comes through more than you think, because I even have gone around and sprayed um, foam around the edges in a lot of rooms. Mm-hmm. And then we um smelled like dirt from the crawl space when we finally put in a, a French drain mm-hmm. with us uh, with a sump pump. And then also when I treated down there, I could smell the cleaner. So even after I did all that spray foam, even after we like changed stuff, like we're still getting a lot of that air, even after we've sealed all the vents. So um, mm-hmm. I think that's a big takeaway, um, you know, from this, if you have a crawl space, you're probably at minimum, breathing in 10 to 15% of your air is probably coming from that crawl space. If it's not sealed right, it's probably closer to like 50 or 60%. It also took Sam figuring out that like just a couple months ago, 
that he like went under the crawl space when it was raining and we realized like we are having standing water for a couple hours only whenever it rains but right. nobody was ever catching that because you'd have to have an inspector come when it's raining at right. the right time and he had been under the house a million times the past year and it so that was like another huge huge issue that it's like to catch it you just have to know that like it has to be on your radar and you have to say okay it's raining really hard i'm gonna go out there right now when it's raining under there and look at it it was like of 10 like, o'clock at night i mean i would highly recommend that if you have that issue if you have a basement it's a little bit more out in the open you know um uh or if you're on a slab you don't have to worry about it as much but if you're on a crawl space have a crawl space then i definitely say like in that time where you're like holy cow it's flooding these this creek is high this bridge is closed like when it gets to that point whenever that is go underneath there and right. and see if you see what you see um, so on the timeline a bit too, I just wanted to point out that you know. So in 2020, you did the mold testing yep. and found that there was no problem. It was fine. Yeah, it was like in normal. February. In February of 22, mm -hmm. is when you had that refrigerator issue. Yep. And at that point, you had decided to hit because you sensed it yep. to have it mold tested again. And because of removing that refrigerator, probably exposing that hole, changing the pressure, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden airflow is is flowing differently yeah you had an ermy score of 38 yeah yeah so i mean that was the best thing i did is i don't know what led me to research that but is just doing an ermy test myself i just used a swiffer and i did mm -hmm. like to collect the dust from the tops of the doors like where mm -hmm. i don't you know dust i used to not dust <laughs> um got a lot of dust on there and so then it was like oh my gosh yeah. and again no visible mold it wasn't right. even like a bathroom where there's you, like you thought you saw some on the vent that's kind of when we got oh panicked. well that was okay. but that was just right that was like at that moment not 30 like, minutes before we went out of the house yeah so not like, it's like things started to spiral i will say the right. other sign that i look back really the only sign that i look back and i'm like i sh that was the sign is that our house was always very 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 dusty we had a lot of chair rail molding and i would like wipe it off or i would vacuum several times a day and then i thought well we've got pets and we've got seven people well i said that i'm like we've got seven to be there's seven people and there's three pets in this house yeah but, a lot of a lot of manufacturing of dead skin cells and yes. so forth is going to create a lot of dust yeah. yeah but then during this whole thing like for a while when we had no place to live that some yeah, some friends let us live at their house for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden it was our whole family plus their family of six two and dogs. two dogs and i was like how often do you vacuum <laughs> Be because there's no dust everywhere and she's like oh i don't know not as much as we should maybe like once or twice a week and i'm like whoa what in the world like <laughs> so having that comparison all of a sudden of same amount or more people it, it like that was a huge 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 sign i think like the vents were just spewing up like our crawl space mm -hmm. and now i know that like mold spores often different types look like they're just dust like it mm -hmm. attaches to dust and right. it kind of you know like i've learned a lot but that was a big wow a big sign and, that and so i mean yeah as you say the takeaway there is is you know it, it you you have to be able to address these things beforehand and recognize the possibilities. I have a problem all the time when clients are building crawl space situations mm -hmm. or they buy a home and they say, yeah, the home seems to be always humid and yeah. so forth. Or, you know, one room of the house is, is more humid than the rest of the house. Yeah. And when, then we go downstairs and we go in the, in the crawl space, we actually start inspecting and find that, well, sure. I mean, cause the water table uh, yeah. outside is, is rising and, and where you would get, moisture entering would be over here yeah. makes sense that it evaporates up and then yeah. that room should be more humid yeah. but most people don't think of those things and and truth be told thank goodness most people don't end up with the severe health issues that you're that you're all going through um, well they do i think so many people do yeah and um, they have autoimmune health issues or they're aging and they have you know alzheimer's or dementia and they just 
I don't, you don't want to know. I mean, I, I yeah. know that like when you decide to go down that we were so desperate because our son was so sick. I mean, we were so depressed and praying so long and hard that he would be healed. Like we were willing to give up everything, but you kind of, we had already, like I had already, um, basically I had quit my job as a nurse I, yeah. because my wife had had so much strain for the last really like three years of like being the primary caregiver for him that she was like, we have to switch some things up. So I was like, well, yeah. if you want to work more full time and I'll work part time, we'll kind of flip flop it. Then, sure. then we'll do that. So we kind of did that for since really since like 2021, really yeah. going on two years. So yeah, it was, it was getting to the point where it's like, we've given up everything else. There's nothing left to give up. Like, right. But I think you have to be to that. Like, I think what I'm saying is I think people are ignorance is bliss. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are sick and they don't, it's too much to it's too much like to have to like face what that might mean true um and so like i mean we had a neighbor say something like the people that we bought the house from i guess he was in construction like renovation actually okay. he like renovated yeah a big well-known place in our area and um so she said i bet if they still lived there they would have figured this out earlier it wouldn't have happened and i was like mm. well i think i think to some degree it had already happened it had yeah they, they bought that as a foreclosure and it was it was a disaster when they moved in we didn't know that and they right. and they fixed it up we they fixed it up made it better for resale yeah you know no they, well, they didn't flip it they fixed it up to live there and that's okay. why it didn't look like a flip i mean yeah they, i think they ended up moving but it wasn't a planned flip okay i think people are just like don't understand like unsealed vents i bet our neighborhood that was built the same year i bet everybody's looking at us like wow poor them and or that like they didn't do something right or that i bet 50 percent of them have unsealed vents same thing sure yeah i bet they do i bet i bet a ton of them have rising water even if they have encapsulation like of the crawl space it's just it's too much to mm -hmm. like deal with but i will say for anybody listening that's like oh my gosh it's too much i can't do this it has been the biggest blessing to just rip the band-aid off till we lost i mean we lost everything we're like starting over like no finances no savings like i mean we're we're we threw away about 80 percent of what we owned yeah we're yeah. just and then we had to partake you know find clean the 20 percent that we kept mm -hmm. um I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, it's it been a huge, months, it's been so. a huge blessing, like, because you heal, you start to heal and you're like, right. oh, this is worth it. And yeah. you start to see what all the stuff you don't need. And you start to learn, like, I was telling you, Andy, before this started, like, if we, so insurance, this is where we get really got screwed. And I hope somebody, this can help somebody, but we, um, we, when we, this first started, we were told by the insurance guy that came out for that kitchen, like the, the repair for the refrigerator. He's like, oh, we'll take care of you. If you need to be in a hotel for a while while this gets fixed, like, you know, they'll, they may have to replace a couple rooms of floors because it's continuous. And, you know, just like if this, like, we've got you. And so then I had talked to somebody else that had had mold issues and they, their insurance company put them up in a hotel, like two rooms in a hotel. We are um, remediators. We're like, this is like, a, we've got so much documentation. Like, we, you think you're going to be good. Like, you've got a good insurance company. And um, the person that we were working with at the beginning switched, like got put on desk duty or whatever. I don't know. Couldn't access him. And we got assigned a new person. And they came and they talked us into making three claims and two of them were so silly. We like, we didn't need to do them, but like, we just were so stressed and we just thought we just need to get out of this. So like one was our garage door was broken and they made a claim on that. Okay. And then one was um, our water heater had just randomly, just randomly broke like under warranty and they made a claim on that. And then they made the big claim well, the big claim, there's a, there was a mold clause on our um, 
insurance and nothing qualified as water damage because it was all old. Like it wasn't like a freak accident, right. which is crazy that if it had been a freak accident, everything would have been taken care of. Like, right. but whatever. So oh, there was a mold cap of only $5,000. So, Ugh. and then those other two little, I mean, there were such piddly claims that we got like a little bit more for it. But here's the big thing that I'm just like, I feel really duped and like almost take, I guess, taken advantage of is not only did they deny everything. And so we spent everything we still had in savings living in a hotel because we, nobody would take us in with seven people. We would have slept in a gym. I mean, we were just like, we were desperate at that point, but we, you know, we lost everything. But so there was no reimbursement for a hotel. There was not, I mean, there was zero, nothing, $5,000. But the biggest thing that I regret with the insurance is, um, so they canceled us, they canceled our insurance, nobody else would pick us up. And then we finally got someone to pick us up. And now it's $500 more a month. So we only got paid out, you know, five, $6,000. And now every year, it's $6,000 more. And it's just it, that really sucks when we're like, we're paying mortgage on a house we can't live on. Plus now our mortgage is $500 more a month. Wow. It feels, I mean, it's like, yeah, we would have been better off if we had just taken done one, none. one claim. I think right. it'll, they'll kind yeah. of let you have one claim. I think when you get past that one claim a year, um, they see you as very high risk. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so then you have to get like high risk insurance. So, yeah, I mean, it literally went from, I don't know, $1,300 a year or $1,600 a year to, to 4,800, I think. Oh, so, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, that was almost all that we, we got. Right. So I would be careful if you start getting that. And that was something that we could have not picked those up knowing this in hindsight, we could have just taken one claim. We didn't know. And right. Somebody could have easily said, Hey, it, and you're then probably going to get dropped us. us. And, yeah. but I think those people actually kind of wanted us to get dropped. Yeah, and that's probably why they guided you to three claims. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, they they kind of they saw the writing on the wall. And so yeah. if you had a an insurance agent um that was trustworthy, they would have they would have guided you a little bit differently, I'm yeah. sure. Um Jennifer, uh, one of our uh, listeners um ch in the chat was saying that yeah, her insurance company gave her five thousand dollars and she needed a hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, that's what I think yeah. it's gonna cost us like I think that's 140, 150. On, and they've done a lot of the work. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're doing work. so much of the work yourselves. Yep. Yeah. And, it's um, and so I guess a couple of things that I wanted to just kind of touch on um, about the last few minutes. First of all, your home was built in 76, you said, correct? I think 78. 78, 78 or nine. Okay. 78, I think. So that's right around the, the point where, so I have clients all the time asking what's a good age of a home to mm -hmm. buy. And so just for people who are listening, this is exactly what I talk about. Homes built in the late seventies to the mid nineties um, started to be built um, a little bit um, tighter, faster, cheaper, um, but without proper ventilation, without purification. Um, you know, in the, in the early seventies, it was all about energy efficiency because it started with the oil embargo and let's build houses tighter well, throughout the 70s and then into the early 80s was when all these manufactured, man-made wood materials started really showing up on job sites. So instead of using, you know, one by six diagonal boards, the subfloor, they started using particle board and OSB and plywood. And at the time, they weren't using anything that had moisture resistance either. So it essentially became a food source for mold. Yeah. And so... This is, I mean, it's just a perfect example. That particular time frame of homes being built are very high probability of mold problems. Mm -hmm. um, I had a client in the showroom just this morning talking about a new build, and, and I, I always explain how 90% of the toxicity issues that could come from a, a home build will come from the things you see and touch on a daily basis after you move in. You know, flooring materials, wall treatments, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But the, at last 10%, and then, of course, most of the mold issues come from that first 10% of, you know, what's behind the walls, under the floors, above the ceiling, the stuff you never see. And if you don't plan that properly during a new build, it leads to a mold problem. It may not be right away. Matter of fact, it's usually several years later. Um, now, 
in a lot of instances, you'll get a, a mold problem in an exterior wall be, in the first two years just because of moisture in the home coming out mm -hmm. and it gets locked in there. But homes built in that era were still, they still had enough breathability, natural breathability. Um, and it took a little while longer, but then all those materials became perfect breeding ground and food sources. Mm -hmm. And so, again, just I wanted to point that out. Um, and then something yeah, else. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, something. I mean, I'm I'm not the expert. You're the expert. But something that dawned on me too, as I was underneath the house, our HVAC system that that we replaced. I don't know, 2018 or something, 19. Um, it was it was pretty obvious. It was like from the 90s, and so it made me realize like, oh, they kind of retrofitted this thing for an HVAC. I'm like, oh yeah, nobody had central central heating and air until like the 90s so these houses that were built in the 70s and 80s well they weren't built for central air so yeah. they went, went and put them in and you know they didn't know what we know today and because yeah. I, I grew up in a house that didn't have central heating and air we had mm -hmm. a crawl space and it was terrible right but we didn't have any vents because we were we had like a, a wood burning stove mm -hmm. and we did have a furnace but it was like it would i guess there were vents then um, but it wasn't, we had window units. And so we weren't getting as much from the crawl space as, as our house was because we got 13 vents cut. Um, yeah. And just something that I, I would have never thought about. Um, no, I think on that, I, I you're right. I think homes back then probably had heating, of course, but probably burn. didn't have air conditioning. A lot of right. homes didn't at that time. And most of the problem with mold, especially in ductwork, is going to happen during the summer months when you have a high amount of humidity, mm -hmm. high amount of, of, of um, fungal activity, and it it's essentially becomes a, a breeding ground. Um, and so, again, homes that have a crawl space, a lot of times the equipment is in that crawl space because they don't want to waste the space on the main level that could be used for a closet or something else. A lot of times homes then will, they don't want to put that in the crawl space. They'll put it up in the attic. And to your point earlier, they'll have the exact same problem because the attic can also be a, a breeding ground if it's not properly insulated and, and so forth. And so, you know, here in the upper Midwest in Wisconsin, most homes are built with basements and with a basement, you can waterproof it correctly. Usually all your HVAC is down there, all your, your, your you know, water heater and, and, you know, water pumps and all that stuff's down there. Uh, and so there's a good way to protect all of that from those elements. In a crawl space, if you do it, you have to make sure that those vents are hermetically sealed. And in the 70s, 80s, 90s, even up until about maybe 10 years ago, this really wasn't an issue because, and it only became an issue because of the whole idea of we need to save money for energy, energy costs going up and, you know, okay, great. We're saving money, but we're also improving the indoor air quality because mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of leaks in the ductwork that could interject mold spores into the, into the ductwork. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, I don't care how we got to this point of making our ductwork and our HVAC systems healthier. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is it is um, it has completely um, changed the indoor air quality of our homes if it's done right. Um, so Jennifer asked hermetically sealed. I guess what I mean by that, it is completely, completely sealed. Every gap and seam um, on the ductwork is taped. So no air, little air pockets or air holes uh, occur and the equipment as well. Most HVAC systems made of you know, a big metal box. And yeah, you just think the air blows through, but there's all these little you know, folds in the metal and rivets and so forth that can all leak little bits of air. And if you actually did like a smoke test through it, you would see little leaks everywhere. So we want those to be completely taped up so you don't get any possibility of spores that'll tra travel in there. And you know, all you need is you know, one or two to start to colonize and then it becomes a huge issue. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you knew. We, and you gave us you gave us that stuff to to seal the Dino too. seal or yeah, mm -hmm. Dynaflex. Yeah. The Dynaflex, yes, yeah. and that works perfectly. Um, we also, I mean, we had like another looking back thing is our first. We kind of worked with two remediators, which both were excellent. But like the first one, they they would see some water staining and be like, 
that's okay. Like, I don't know how they, why they said it's okay, but they would say that's okay. They were like, there's, you know, see all this water staining around, like, in the bathroom or the under the bandities. And this was not from us. This was probably from, like, 20 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. And they were like, you, you just need to re remove that and check. And we're like, oh. And we thought we were done with remediation. So the past since January, that's when you said, like, how's it going earlier? I, we were like, yeah. It's because <laughs> since January, it's like. He'll go and check a little place in the bathroom and some there's nothing and some there is mold. And then he'll look down and he sees water staining on the floor, like this floor, the floor below, the bottom yeah. plate, which is the yeah. ceiling, yeah. Above, you know, from the, so then he'll go and have to remove ceiling. So we, we keep finding it and it's just, I don't know, I guess it's, it's, it's more obvious once you go through, but it's like, if you have any, if you see any water staining that wasn't yours, was from somebody else, or you have a leak, just address it immediately. Right. Like, don't hope and pretend like it's hopefully okay. I would say assume it's not okay. Now, if you have a leak and you can act on it immediately. And, and then I would also just say, like, don't be afraid to cut out drywall. That's right. the biggest thing I've learned. I hate it. I hate mudding. I've got, like, a frozen shoulder from it. But <laughs> drywall is not scary. I mean, you have to do it under containment if you think there's mold like or hire somebody i'm not saying just rip it out but if you have a leak that's happening right then just like cut out the drywall get some fans and a dehumidifier in there it's not i think there's like this do that or that will cause an inconvenience but it's just like I don't know, like once you kind of get to where we are, we're like, eh. and, and where I found a lot of that hidden mold well. was, if you imagine the, the, the back of the vanity and then drywall, right. right? And then your studs and then drywall on the other side, it was between the bottom plate, the bottom, mm -hmm. not, not the side stud, but you know, right. the bottom plate and the drywall on the opposite side. The other, so, like, room. so the, so the, you know, whatever's behind your bathroom, basically so the hallway or the living room or you know mm -hmm. another room whatever it was it was on that back side because that's the hardest side to dry mm -hmm. um when that happens so don't forget that if you're you know if you have a water event to pop off the baseboards on the other side and then cut that drywall you probably just could do honestly you could probably just do the bottom little bit that you could eventually cover back with the the, the baseboard so you're sure. probably not even going to have to do like some crazy drywall patch right um you know it's because it's just what gets that bottom plate and getting that bottom inch or two of water you know really dry in there that's a great point thank you for bringing this up uh you know in in construction remodeling we i i we also like to talk about making sure that all those wet walls you know potential wet walls uh a plumbing leak somewhere that can cause moisture in that wall so bathrooms kitchens and then the opposite side uh the other thing that i really want to stress what you said is don't be afraid to to tear off drywall or to open things up to to air out i know people are always worried about that because then that means oh, i gotta bring a drywaller in and now i gotta bring a painter in and i gotta try to probably paint the whole room because nothing's gonna match yeah. folks i'm telling you right now the little bit of work that has to be done at this point and the little bit of yes. money. Yes. And maybe it's a lot of money, but maybe it's a couple thousand dollars, but that is nothing compared to new what new you floors. can have to spend. Yeah. Can I share something really quick? But I mean, I really think in a lot of those cases that you could just, yeah, you could just pop off your, your four inch baseboard. Right. And then really probably cut like two, two inches high, two or three inches show. high. And then like, yeah. you know, I'm throw air in there and cross. I'm going to show you something real quick. Up okay. and then We're in a duplex. Okay. Like living, renting. It's brand new. And like brand new. And this, this is a new sink. But this, mm -hmm. the sink that was there started leaking from here. It went down. Let's see if I you can see. I don't know if see. there's enough light. Can you, can you see on this side? Can, can you see like the water staining? I can, yes. Yeah. So like that was not from those pipes. That was from here. 
And wow. this, and a plumber or a tile person or a kitchen person will tell you this will not happen. But I'm telling you, this is a new place, and it happened. <laughs> it leaked from up there. It went. It's and it follows the pipes. Like water follows sure. the pipes. So right. then it went onto the wall, and we're we're renting, and we said like, do you want us to cut out drywall? Do you want us to do this? And they're like, no, don't do it. Well, let me just. So this place has LVP, and I know a lot of people yeah. think that's the next best thing, and it won't leak or nothing will happen. But this is the other side of that wall. And can you see that? Yep. Exactly. The LVP popped up. And again, right. we were like, do you want us to cut it out? Remove? <laughs> and they're like, no. And so, I mean, you can, that's, I mean, that's renting right. for you. I mean, we're well, like, but that would have been so easy to just remove the baseboard, cut a little bit out, pop mm -hmm. that LVP off, put some fans, put it let back. Let it dry out. Right. Yes, just let it dry out. But I mean, that's. That's how these things happen is because people tell you that it's all okay or mm -hmm. it never will happen. And you just are like, okay, I trust it. But when it comes down to it, it's like water can easily lead to mold. Right. So when there's water, just pull stuff up, dry it. And then you won't have to pull every, you know, like everything right. up. No, oh, so. that's a, just a great, a great way to put it. It's just, you know, um, it's, it's interesting. There's, Water is one of those things that's completely um, necessary for life, but it's <laughs> also responsible for a lot of bad things, too. I mean, years ago in my own house, probably 20 years ago, we had a roof leak because of major storm damage. And um, for the rest of my life, the sound of dripping water, anytime I hear something that sounds like dripping water, I don't care where I am in the world, yeah. I start to get almost hyperventilation because of that, yeah. remembering that. Um, but so... Um, one of the things you said too about LVP and I, and I try to stress this with clients, LVP is considered a waterproof floor. Every manufacturer that makes this stuff now pushes the fact that it's considered waterproof. And I always have to stress to clients, understand what that means. That means if you take a piece of that floor and you put it in a bucket of water, nothing will happen to that floor. It has nothing to do with what happens to the subfloor underneath it. And, well, and where does the water come from? It always comes along the walls, right, right. where the edge of the LVP would, right. right? So it goes under it. Like, yes. People and so don't this is, get mold from dropping a glass of water. No. You know, this, like, yes. And this, that's a perfect example to show whenever you're having problems on a floor like this, people will say, well, that's okay. My floor is waterproof. Nothing will happen to it. You're right. What will happen is the subflooring itself will start to swell and cup mm -hmm. and then turn into a mold problem. So, we always have to point that out because I think people just believe that the building materials these days are so safe when it comes to protection against these things. And that's not the case. It's, it's usually something else you don't think of that actually causes um, the huge issue. Um, uh, Olivia asked if uh, your son's pans has improved with the changes that you're making. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing. So I will say this to anybody that has a, themselves or someone in their family that is very sick getting out of the mold did not help initially it, i think things got worse literally the the second day that we were out of the mold his stomach like looked distended i kind of pressed on it and he projectile vomited on me like i pressed on like where his liver would be um i think and i had like racing heart uh, like just it was really it weird. was crazy and stressful obviously it, like yeah. when, we decided to move out of the house like at 6 30 at night um it was like uh we got to stay in a hotel just like yeah. everybody out yeah. but um it did not get better until i i took this um course on wellness plus app dr jess petros it's called like mold and biotoxin illness and to sum it up the bottom line was like it was kind of like how you cure all biotoxin illness is basically the same. You open the drainage pathways in the body, you detox, you build the you may, um, immune system. Anyway, I mean, our son had so many, it was like a tangled spaghetti, like right. insulin resistance, couldn't poop, you know, all this. He was this very constipated. Psych he issues. was on uh, extremely heavy dose of laxatives. <sighs> and within a month, we had like half those laxatives and within like two or three months, 
we were down to like a quarter. And it was like almost like a normal amount that like an old person. And we had tried everything natural over the years. Like we're very natural. Like Oh, we had tried all that stuff. We we went to a fertility specialist. That signed off on that. Basically we had, we thought he was withholding. And so we gave him this enormous amount with the doctor watching him. And we realized like, oh, this is helping him immensely just being able to to poop regularly. Because when your brain right. is swollen, then it's like your vagal it's nerve isn't working, your body's. So anyway, we started using cell core supplements. They have comprehensive phases. The program that we listened to, the course was um, Wellness Plus um, Mold and Biotoxin Illness. But I mean, it's good. It's nothing like mind blowing. It really just got down to, I don't, like, got to me using these cell core products, um, comprehensive phases, they have different ones. It's like six of them. And so like just comes in a box and the first Mm -hmm. stages months are like just opening your detox pathways, because if you try to detox and like he wasn't pooping, you know, and he would wet the bed Mm -hmm. all the time. He doesn't ever wet the bed anymore. Um, yeah, but it opens the drainage pathways, the lymph, like, urine probably also like he didn't test high for mold a lot of times that's because the drainage pathways are blocked so the body isn't detoxing and that's why you're kind of going crazy but those that's those cell core products we're still he's still like on the last phase which addresses like lyme disease um babesia bartonella different like uh parasites that it goes through Mm -hmm. parasites the different ones but um i mean that 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 actually like when we started that immediately we saw improvements and um it's not like we're out of the woods but we he, still have hard days he started going yeah. to he's homeschooled we had to pull him out of school um but he started going to his homeschool co-op a couple months ago and like that's for us it's like really big to have like mm-hmm. one day where we get a couple hours to mm-hmm. um breathe but yeah we've seen tremendous it's like i we haven't done it there we did a year ago he had a blood test that measured like the inflammation in his brain and it was really elevated and concerning. Um, I haven't paid to do that again, but I'm pretty much, I'm pretty positive. If we did that again, it would be no, of no concern. And we have a, we had a binder of like this, thick, of lab full tests. of lab tests, positive and, lab tests, you know, write ups and all that stuff. So we didn't like, we didn't diagnose this on our own. Yeah, we weren't. Um, we've been going to doctors, all doctors for, for years and years and years, tens of thousands of dollars. But it did come down to that course and taking those supplements. I kind of had to take it into my own hands. The other thing I would say is like, was like, whoa, was um, Jill Krista. I heard her on a doctor, Jill Krista. I heard her on a podcast. She had mold issues in her house. She had twins and they both had pans. And she's a doctor and she wrote a book on pans and pandas. That's like, where has this been for the past six years? And she, it's so prescript prescriptive. It just tells it you like, it just came out. That's where it's been. And she also, has, that. I was like, where does she been? also has a book on it's mold. Like published 2023. She also has yeah. on mold and it tells you like exactly what to do. So the cell core is really what helped us. But when he will start to kind of act wiggy, we'll go to her book. But that's specific for pans. And we'll, mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. she has one on mold. Too, oh, she does. That, yeah, that I think is just as helpful. Um, so those have been like out of all, we've done neurofeedback. We've done all, t- I mean, we've done so much. We've done so much stuff. We tried so many diets. I mean, we've both, gone. Both like, you know, holistic and like, like Western medicine. Ketos, like all C- kinds of different SIBO stuff. diet, candida diet. Yeah, we've tried every we've diet. Gone to, we go to doctors. And some of them have helped and some of them made things worse. We go so, to doctors that like speak at autism one conferences. Mm-hmm. Like we've, I mean, people that know what they're doing and it really, it was kind of like, I'm taking this into my own hands. Like, and after we tried everything to think that like, Oh, it's the environment. Even if it's not mold, it's something mm-hmm. in our environment made a lot of sense. It's like, we've literally tried everything else. Right. Like there's nothing and it would left go up and down. We would sure. have like so. months where things would get better. And then it would like every October, it would get so that was another big hint. Bad is, is in October, at least in South Carolina, For five years. What I noticed is we, we had the HVAC off in our house for a while right. and I was concerned. So I bought several dehumidifiers so we didn't get like, you know, 80% humidity in the house. What I noticed is 
it's very humid from like this time of year, April, all the way until October. And then there is a time in October, somewhere between the 10th and 20th, where all of a sudden, when on days it doesn't rain, it's not humid anymore. And hmm. all, all that mold dies off. Yeah, it leaves. And then it that's when dry. the mycotoxins get released. And the same for your HVAC, I think. And I think that's why we were seeing that spike in October. It makes so much sense because most people are more allergic to the mycotoxins that they release when they die than the actual mold. And I think that that's what was happening. And that's why he was going crazy every October. If so, people see like up and down pattern, that's like they can put markers on it. I would say that mold, I like yeah. something in the environment for exactly. sure. Yeah. So um, a couple of questions that came up. Um, Robin wants to know if you can name the program again. What I'm going to have you do, if you don't mind, is yeah. a- after the show, can you just type it in the yeah. on the show notes? Yes. Um, yes. or on the listing so that we, yeah. people can link to it. The second yeah. thing is um, Olivia asked or says that she rented a home for two years that had a mold issue. And since leaving, um, her son has developed issues that seems like pans. We yeah. built a new home following a lot of the advice that given here and hoping that our current home is not contributing to the issues we have started. So I started thinking about this because you had said that your son's um, son's conditions got worse after leaving. Olivia yeah. says that her we son- all did. Yeah, and her son got worse after leaving uh, the mold issues. Yep. Could it be, and I don't know, maybe if this doctor talks about it in the book, could it be that, you know, when you are surrounded by this day in and day out, it almost becomes like the equivalent of a drug addiction. Yeah, and or maybe like a symbiotic it, like a relationship. Right, yeah. and when your body leaves it, all of a sudden your body's going into like sort of a odd detox. form of fight or flight. It's detox. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. like it would be with I drugs. I think a lot of it's detox. Um, I think because you're, you're releasing what you're breathing in. All of a sudden, you're getting all these amounts in your bloodstream that you're and and you know you're trying to clean out now. Finally, we um, our son even like when he we is. noticed that when he has um, like he'll get a bit of a dopamine and it like is really hard. So even just like neurotransmitters and things like that. Like if you're not peeing, pooping, sweating they're going to, those are going to get clogged up and that's going to make people, you know, so I would say that needs to detox and open up the pathways. And then the other thing that we haven't done yet, but that I want to, that I've heard has helped a lot of people is um, dynamic neural retraining. So Mm -hmm. DNRS, I guess there's one that's that and Gupta, Gupta, um, I think it's like 350 to $400. um, And that's one of the next things I want to do because I've, I, I call, when we were hiring a remediator, I asked for references and I like talked to all of them. Mm-hmm. And one of the people I talked to said the same thing. She's like, we couldn't heal until we did this DNRS. Sure. And then it, it like changed everything. So and they when we were looking for inspectors, another good point oh, is yes. we, what we decided was let's go to, somebody gave us the suggestion, go to the doctors that are treating this in your area and ask them who <clears> they recommend. Mm, and I would idea. recommend that because a lot of the people that are in this industry are like, look, you have mold. They'll sell it you on the mold. It doesn't make you sick. Mm-hmm. But they are, they're they kind of assuming like you're not really sick. It's its affecting your air quality. Maybe you're a little bit behind, but that you're not like deathly ill. Right. So they're not going to think and be as aggressive as maybe you want people to be. We were, we, we, we were like begging doctors to make extreme decisions. Mm-hmm. Um you know, like for, for example, for a kid, like our kid, like they won't order a CT scan on a kid. Like I worked in no trauma ICU. I know like they do not like to order CT scans on kids unless it's life or death because it's like, it's like 360 x-rays. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of radiation. Mm-hmm. So, um, or like, you know, just things like that. Like we were to the point where we would have signed off on anything, like totally would have signed off on like extreme stuff but you go into the doctor's office and they're thinking we don't want to do this extreme thing same thing about people that come into your house we don't want to do this extreme thing this is a lot we don't recommend it you know Mm -hmm. so but if you go start with a doctor who's like healing people that are like life and death and desperate they understand and they'll like here's the person you need to talk to both of our remediators too i will say this they both i think got into remediation because they were had toxic mold illness uh, like, so I would actually say if you're vetting people, I would 
try to find someone like that because we found two and they are so passionate about it because and also they're bought this is not like it's like advantageous but not good for them their bodies react so when they inspect the house they're like i can feel it and i can feel it now when i go places that have mold it's like it hurts in my bones and I start and to I feel like it everywhere. paralyzed. It's just like yeah. the dripping. Yeah. Right. I'm kind of the same way, but mm-hmm. also with like any kind of mold stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, you know, I can't believe they don't. You know, like, like, yeah, restaurants and stuff like that, yeah. the bathrooms. And... Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So um, a couple things here. We're, get, we're getting to the end of the show. Um, if there's any other questions that people want to ask, please, now's the time. If we don't get to it before the show ends, uh, we'll we'll address it afterwards uh, in the, in the in the show notes. The second thing is is that um, you had mentioned DNRS. We actually had a really really involved conversation here in the circle community about that. Okay. And so find that post. Yeah, I will. Uh, or I'll find it and I'll tag you in it because okay. there's some pretty strong opinions. Um, oh really? Both like ways. negative and positive. Yeah, and I think okay. it comes down to the individual, whether or not they are somewhat have the, the, the predisposition to be able to have this work for them. Okay. Cause uh, I don't know enough about it. All yeah. I know is that it's really helped some people, but I haven't like taken that step. So that will be a great I, resource. I have clients who have gone through it and they swear by it. I have other clients who started it and they said it was, it was, uh, worse than anything they've ever, they've ever done, and so it just—I think it comes down wow. to the person. And again, yeah. uh, in that um, in that um, uh, chat on, on the circle community here, there, some people go into great detail about it, and so okay. it was very helpful. I thought uh, because I actually wanted to have the the inventor of it on the yeah. show to talk about it, and sure. she refuses to do podcasts. And so I'm wondering it's, if it's because there is such a polarizing Polarized. opinion about it. Good and bad. I think that in everything in life, nothing can be perfect, right? And so yeah. I've heard I think, it's too much for kids. I have heard yeah, that. Yeah. And so, uh, but I think it comes down to um, each individual and in, in how they respond to certain things. And so, but definitely take a look at that. Yeah. Um, everybody, thank you so much for coming to this. Um, Ash, Sam, it's so good to see you. And, and um, it's Me good too. to hear that there are thank improvements. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Uh, when do you think, when do you think you're going to be moving back into your home? We get this. We've gotten this from the beginning. I mean, it's a lot with the kids going to school right now. We'll go like two to four hours a day. Like before I was here, I was like, you know, fixing windows and everything like that at the house. But, um, our goal is to try to get back in by the end of the summer, because we will have the summer to not have to do all the the school stuff. So sure. that's, I don't think we're going to have you finished, but no. our goal is to get the kitchen, a bathroom with a shower and the bedrooms safe and all the drywall mudded because it just it sanded. Sure. It's so much dust. Right. Um, I did, I did. Can I ask you a question real quick? Sure or is can. It yeah. Time? And maybe, maybe this isn't something you don't know. So the last step our remediator wants to do, and they say that this is like, the secret sauce that they found that really helps people. And I've done some research on it in some mold groups. And some people said like it helped bring like their ermy or hurts me, whatever each H whatever that other one is down like so significantly. And I've also seen that some people, and I'm not advocating for this at all. Like this is out of my realm, but I I do know that there is a population patient of people that say that this has helped with autism and they take it orally so i know that like i'm not saying it's safe to do Mm -hmm. that i'm just saying it's chlorine dioxide they want Mm -hmm. to fog with chlorine dioxide which is not chlorine Mm -hmm. um it's i guess used for like in food environments Mm -hmm. and sanitization and it's supposed to like Mm -hmm. uh, help um like break down toxins i guess Yeah. yeah um and so but of course it just I just feel terrified of sure. everything. Right. So do you know anything about that? So that's a, a good question. I've actually had a, um, a lot of folks doing either chlorine dioxide or a product like EC3 uh, mm-hmm. as a fogging material. I like the EC3 from a standpoint that it is all natural ingredients. Right. Uh, 
you know, and and um, I'll I'll be um, using it myself on a project here locally because I want to make sure that it's something that I can really advocate for before right. I go ahead and do that. But I've had a lot of folks reach out to say that it is a viable product. Um, the chlorine dioxide, I, I have had people say that it works very well, uh, but again, it's a it's it's chemistry, and I worry yeah. about chemistry and what else it's doing yeah. in the home and what else it can react to right. negatively. It's kind of like it's kind of like ozone. I'm a big believer of ozone usage if it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if it's used in an environment where you have a high amount of formaldehyde, right. used, it's actually going to make things worse. Right. And so how are you going to know that without actually doing testing right before you do it? You know, yeah. so uh, it, it's it really is. Um, I think all of this is sort of. Um, coming to the market now because of COVID pandemic, if it's done one thing oh, for uh -huh. all of us, it's actually improved the outlook on how we take care of our indoor environments because of right. all these new technologies that came out. Uh, and Jennifer, you're right. I mean, you definitely have to do, you know, small micro particle cleaning after uh, after fogging, after doing oh, yeah. these cleaning, because we've done it already it. like five million times, and we I know. plan on doing it another five million times. Yeah, like, right, exactly, exactly. But yeah. I'll tell you what: after I use this the EC3 product myself, I will report on it here. Okay, and then I'll also see if I can have somebody come on the show to talk about these different methods. Okay, see if that we would can be get great. some some professional, like independent um, yeah. information about this. Okay, I I would love that because that is like kind of the final. Like yep. you want something that's going to work, right. but you also don't want something that you're going to find out later either didn't work or has a side effect that you right. wish you would have known before you sprayed your whole house with it. Right. You know, I used to say to customers, well, if you've done all the work correctly, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't need to do the fogging. Right. Right. But I think that it's, it's kind of common theory now that, listen, we can't get everything. You know, yeah. these these little spores and dust particles yeah. are, are lighter than air. Yeah. And so there's going to be areas that you don't get. And so fogging, essentially, with whatever we decide to use, is is combating that at that same molecular level. Yeah. And so it's like, all right, this is the the coup de grace. And, and right. hopefully after the that. Clean slate, kind of. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I believe this is the direction we're all going to go in this industry. But um, yeah, there's got to be some consensus as what's the safest way to, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, folks. Um, th again, thanks for joining. Ash, Sam, it's great to see you. You too. Thank you so much thanks. for all of your help. I don't know where we would be, like, you know, with all of our, like, help. What do we do about this? <laughs> well, sending I pictures of my HVAC to you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, you know, that's what I'm here for. And I, and I love to be involved and obviously anything we can do to, um, to share your story. And, uh, I'll be, I'll be linking, uh, information about their story on, on here too. And, and if anybody wants to get involved, I know, um, a GoFundMe was started. I'm not pitching people right now, but I'm just saying that, you know, we're, we're trying to get in, get this story into the ears and eyes of, of some, you know, uh, movers and shakers in this country to see if um, and we can get some help for you. Because again, your story, your house is becoming, I think, um, almost like a blueprint of, mm. of how you go from good to bad, to worse, to, to better. And, oh, yeah. and, and There's so much it. hope. There's so much hope. I would do it all. I mean, I would do all of it. I wouldn't buy the house again, but at the same time, you could buy any house. I don't, I do not, I feel better about remediating our house yeah. and getting to like knowing it intimately than buying a new house, at, like, and not, and not knowing I would be terrified to buy any house at this point. But so like the house, you know, really, really well is probably the safer house. Like anybody can know their house. It's built really, really well. well. The people that have, you know, been in professionally, they're like, this house is built really well. And, and I asked them about like building new and they're like, we tear out, he's like, we tear out showers that are eight months old and there's mold everywhere. He's like, I wouldn't trust anybody with these, you know? So, you know, I, you know, I, I just have to be careful. I think it's just like anything you think, right. you think. No, your you house know. is history too. Yeah. You buy a house. Yeah. You better ask if there should be, has been any foreclosures, no matter how nice the neighborhood or pretty it looks like. 
I would have never guessed. Exactly. Ever. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. Uh, we'll have you on the show maybe in a few months to have a little update of what's going on. That would be fun. Be here in, uh, maybe May, we or... can get wife moved in or like close to it, get Wi-Fi yeah. there and do a little tour. Yeah. That sounds great. I look forward to it. All right, guys. Take care. Okay. Thanks, thanks. Andy. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, we will see you again uh, next week with another episode of Non-Toxic Environments Live. Take care. Mm -hmm.